Welcome to the show. How are you doing? How's your day been? I'm fantastic. How are you? My day's been great. How was your day? Uh, my day's just got much better, I have to say. Um, I'm really looking forward to the interview, actually. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, of course. Why don't you tell everybody who you are? Hey, I'm Emma. I um, troll the internet on a daily basis. I am an American software engineer living in Germany. I currently work at LogMe as a software engineer. The thing that I really enjoy about web development in particular, because I have kind of worked full stack, but with web development, most especially is the ability to physically see your product come to life from building out the architecture with HTML to then applying CSS and seeing, you know, the layout and the visuals come together to then applying JavaScript and behavior to finishing it off with animations. And so kind of building something from, from the ground up and being able to see it with, with my own eyes versus, you know, the back end, things are not as graphical. It's not a graphical user interface. It's more um, about data and, and architecture. So I understand completely why people like that. But for me, I love seeing tangibly the things kind of come together in the UI to make a beautiful product that people will engage with. What is sort of the beginning of Emma Boston? I grew up as the child of two IBMers. Technically, I'm a third generation. My grandpa also worked for IBM. My dad is a senior architect, and my mom was a senior designer. She just retired. So my whole life, I grew up with parents who said, you would be great in engineering. You should check out computer science. And as a result, my natural instinct was to say, nah, like I'm going to do my own thing. I want to forge my own path. And then when I got to college and I had this crisis, I was like, you know what, let me switch to another major. And so I switched into actuarial science, where I got to study statistics and computer science. And that's where I fell in love with all things engineering. And so I switched finally to a computer science major with a business minor. And then, yeah, the, the rest of the story goes quite quite quickly. I graduated with a computer science degree. I moved down to Austin, Texas for three years. I got to work on a design team at IBM. I built the quantum computing network site, which was super fun. It's not what, it's not what, it's was. And it's something you gotta understand because it's the man behind the curtain, your financial ass. That nice new car you've been thinking of. Banks, insurance, and Back to the storyline. Sorry for that intermission. You're at IBM, you do all this cool stuff, you built the IBM Q network website um, with Vue. Quick question here. Um, Vue versus React, what is your view on that? Vue was so refreshing to switch to from Dojo and Angular 1, because mm -hmm. I was using both of those. Um, why I loved Vue was it was so beginner friendly. The documentation and the community are so welcoming. It was very, very easy for me to get up and running. When I switched to React, it was because I was joining LogMe and they were using React Redux TypeScript. When I started React, I hated it. it I'd always been told, oh, it's a lot more powerful than, than Vue. Um, and now that I've used both, I wouldn't say I will never use Vue again. But once you fall in love with React, it's kind of hard to want to go away from it again. Um, I do find it's a larger community, but the community itself can be harder to feel welcome in sometimes. It, it kind of depends. Interesting. Um, I think the Vue community, in my opinion, has always been very, very welcoming to beginners. React is a little bit harder. It feels like because it's been around longer, it's more widely accepted. You are going to get people who maybe are more gatekeepy, and that for me was hard. But just looking at like the syntax, how I architect applications, I love React, and I, I don't think I would go back. For me, I need to pick one or the other. I can't work on both simultaneously. I get so confused. Yeah, that's fair enough. Do you, do you feel like there's any parts of you that you're missing in React or, or vice versa? I feel like some of the directives that Vue has were really useful for me, but 
to be honest, I don't remember enough about view to to yeah, accurately like compare the two. Yeah, because it's been like uh three years or so since I've used it. Yeah, right. Fair enough. Fair enough. So it's probably also evolved a lot since you've used it. To be totally yeah. fair, because it's like changed <laughs> <Yeah>. a ton. <laughs> so yeah. Now, what's the next step for you? Where do you go from there? Progress is our progress bar actually have, have a contrast ratio. I'm really excited to be here, and. Today we're going to talk about design systems. So my experience speaking at conferences has been, for the most part, really humbling and really wonderful. I've met so many incredible people, people that I've known for a long time and admired for a long time through Twitter and, and the industry. Um, so that's been really wonderful, but I... I don't necessarily think all of these conferences I've spoken at wanted me for my work. I do think to some extent the fact that I am a woman in tech got me into a lot of those spaces and those slots. And so I would just love to see more organizers taking chances on the newer speakers in the industry, seek out people from all different backgrounds. I would much rather those speaking slots go to people who don't have as big of a following on social media, but who have an incredible amount of talent. So let's talk about kind of the psychology behind these small interactions. First of all, a couple of examples. I started or I co-founded a podcast with two of my other friends, the Ladybug Podcast. So every week we talk about tech and career. I have worked on creating a couple of courses. So I have two courses that came out this year. One was with LinkedIn Learning. A resume is the first thing you need to apply for a job. And having a complete resume will differentiate you from the candidate pool. Resumes allow employers to learn more about a candidate. And the second was with Front End Masters. Design systems have been a passion of mine for about two years now, and they're really revolutionizing the way that we build applications. Some of the things we'll cover include foundations of design systems. Then we'll design some components using Figma. We'll take those designs and turn them into coded components. We'll animate those components. We'll I also decided to self-publish an ebook this year, which was um, the weirdest experience, uh, the most rewarding experience that I've, I've gone through thus far. Um, when I received a job offer from Spotify and when I went through the interview process of Google and I've got, you know, through all these technical interviews, I, I sat down and I realized many people struggle with these technical interviews, especially on the front end side of development. And many people are losing their jobs right now as a result of coronavirus. And I wanted to give back to the community and share some of my knowledge. So in 30 days, I wrote a 217 page ebook all about the technical interview process where I walked through like data structures and algorithms. And that was by far the most challenging and most rewarding project that I've worked on. So I've just been working on this accessibility app or inclusive design checklist for LogMean at the moment. We really focused a lot on web accessibility and so we started this group called Accessibility Champions, and one of the missions that we had was to create a checklist for uh, for designers and developers to be able to create accessible designs and applications without necessarily knowing how to read the WCAG documentation. And so we went and created this um, series of, I guess, questions that ask you, does your design have input fields, does your design have flashing content? And based on all of the things that you select, it will pick and choose these different WCAG guidelines for you and output it to a very nice looking custom checklist. So that's been kind of my like last project, I guess, that I've been wrapping up. I think a lot of times design systems end up being like this promised land, right? Like, oh, this is the tech stack that we want to be using in like 10 years across our entire company. Mm. And so people build a design system, but then you never get there. And then nobody uses the design system. Well, right? that, was, so I think this... that was a hard lesson that I had to learn because I originally wanted to do things the right way. I wanted to build one design system that everyone uses and migrates to. And then I realized, because I was talking to my friend Christian Schroeder and he sat down and he goes, look, you've got one of two things can happen right now. He goes, you can build this the way that you want, but you will not get developer support. 
Or you can get all of us to help you, but you have to let us build it our own way and we'll have several, like several packages. And for me, what was more important was unifying all these different product teams and getting better developer collaboration than me coming in and building this whole thing in isolation and no one uses it. So it's not ideal, right? Like I wouldn't, you wouldn't normally build a fully fledged design system on top of Google's material UI because they're opinionated <laughs> in their styling, right? It's kind of like you're building a design system on top of a design system. like. Um, but you got to pick your battles, I guess is the biggest takeaway. And, uh, yeah, it's doing well so far. Nice. Nice. All right. So you've, you've spent one and a half years building this design system and now you're off to Spotify. on a half day project for Spotify. They do these I think every month um, and this one was Monday and Tuesday this week. So we are trying to animate the save playlist uh, button using the Airbnb Lottie um, library uh, and I'm collaborating with one of my colleagues on that right now. So I think one of the reasons it was easier for me to onboard at Spotify than at my previous companies is that I already had experience working with the tech stack. Um, so my team, and I think most of the teams, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't know because I'm still a new hire, are using React, Redux, and TypeScript. I used that at my previous job at LogMeIn, and so it was a nice transition for me to onboard with. Um, there's also an internal design system called Encore, which is really, really neat. It's relatively new, but it's a set of components that all of the different endpoints within Spotify can kind of consume and contribute back to. Um, so it's been really fun kind of, I guess, getting to know the technology stack a little bit. For the first like five years of my career, I really wasn't extremely passionate about what I was doing and it took a toll on my mental health and definitely perpetuated my imposter syndrome. I didn't feel good enough to be in this career. It's not something that I even knew I wanted to do for the long term. And it wasn't until I found my current job where I was able to mesh my passion for music and my passion for engineering that I finally can wake up in the morning and feel excited to go to work. Even if I don't know what I'll be working on that day or I'm working on something really challenging that's outside of my primary domain, I'm still really grateful and really passionate about my work and, and that's a really good feeling. I think the moment that you find a job that you're really passionate about is the moment that you unlock this new level within which you can come into your own and you can grow your development skills in ways that you previously had not you didn't have access to. So for me, it was this ability to achieve my dream job and combine music and engineering that really fueled my desire to be the best developer that I can be. Developers find jobs across Europe using Honeypot. If you're up for a new challenge in one of these European cities, sign up at honeypot.io. If you want to see more tech documentaries, then subscribe so you don't miss the next one.